Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are safe and sound. This series of videos is going to continue the discussion on displacement sensors. However, unlike the previous series of videos, this time I am going to talk about rotational displacement sensors. If you are looking for linear displacement sensors, then refer to the series of videos on linear displacement sensors which came last week. So to start with the discussion of rotational displacement sensors, we need to understand what a rotational motion is. Rotational motion is defined as angular displacement about some rotational axis. Just like the needles of the clock are rotating about a center point or a car tire revolving as the car moves. So before we discuss the ways to measure this rotational motion, let me talk about few situations where rotational displacement sensors are required. Do you know that around 80% of the things that are man-made and are moving are utilizing motors to produce motion? If a motor is being used, then primarily rotational motion is generated that should be measured to control overall motion. For example, if you want to ride a bicycle for 2 kilometers, then how you are going to keep track of your motion? The obvious way will be to note the number of rotations of the bicycle wheel and multiply it with the circumference of the bicycle tire. This will give you the distance the bike is traveling. Same thing goes for a motorbike, car or even a small mobile robot you have made as a hobby maybe. Moreover, all the robots working in any kind of industry are majorly utilizing motors to produce motion. And you might know that such robots are highly accurate machines, at least as far as the motion is concerned. Therefore, the motion generated by the motors in a robot needs to be measured before the motion can be controlled. Just as a last example, the rotary motion of a hard disk or even a DVD is measured to make sure the read-write head is positioned at the right location for reading or writing data. In short, you can easily see numerous examples around you where rotational motion is being measured and used. So let's start the discussion on various rotational displacement sensors that are used in practice for measuring rotational displacement in various situations. If you followed the video on linear displacement sensors, then you must have gone through the oldest and perhaps the cheapest devices that may be used to measure linear displacement. Those devices are linear potentiometers. Not surprisingly, potentiometers are also available in circular or even helical form. Therefore, the slider movement instead of being linear is circular. Rest of the theory and considerations are exactly similar to linear potentiometers. Normally, these devices can measure any rotation less than a complete circle, that is 360 degrees. However, if you want to measure angles greater than a complete rotation, then the helical form of potentiometers can be used. Helical form allows the rotation of the slider to go beyond one complete rotation. Hence, these are also called multi-turn potentiometers. The physical construction of these potentiometers is shown through the schematics. The core onto which the slider rotates can be made of wire wound on a central mandrel or carbon track printed on a ceramic base. These type of circular potentiometers, also known as rotary potentiometers, are still being used to regulate voltage being supplied to fans. As you rotate the slider, the resistance between the slider and any one terminal of the rotary potentiometer changes, which in turn changes the voltage drop across these two terminals. Fan or any other device is attached in parallel to these two terminals. Therefore, voltage being supplied to that device also changes. As far as sensing is concerned, if something that can rotate about an axis is attached with this slider, then rotation of the object will rotate the slider and hence the resistance change will occur. This resistance change can easily be read if this variable resistor is attached in a potentiometer form. The next rotational displacement sensor that I am going to discuss is once again a modification of a linear displacement sensor which we already have discussed in a previous video. I am talking about an LVDT that is a linear variable differential transformer. 
If you have followed the previous video that discusses how an LVDT works, you can easily appreciate that the movement of the core between the primary and secondary sides dictates the voltage which is being received at the secondary side. In case of an LVDT, the movement of the core was linear. However, if we have this kind of core and it is being rotated about an axis, then the rotation of the core is going to affect the amount of voltage being induced in both secondary coils. This is called a rotational differential transformer. In the shown position, the magnetic flux between the primary and both secondary coils is same. Therefore, you are going to get no output on the secondary side. However, if the core is rotated clockwise, the magnetic flux linkage between the primary side and the upper secondary coil is going to increase, whereas the flux linkage between the primary and the lower secondary side will decrease. Hence, giving us an increased voltage output with a positive phase. On the contrary, if the core is rotated counterclockwise from the shown position, the magnetic flux linkage between the primary and the lower secondary side is going to increase. And hence, we are going to get an increased voltage output, but with a different phase. I'm not going to explain the mathematics involved over here because the mathematics are exactly similar to those of LVDTs which were explained in detail in the referenced video. Just like in LVDTs, the physical construction of the core is very important over here as well. Therefore, great care should be taken while manufacturing the core. Such kind of rotational displacement sensors are used for measuring rotational motion of plus minus 60 degrees only. The next rotational displacement sensor, which is called resolver, also utilizes the working principle of a transformer just like rotational differential transformer, but in a bit different way. Resolvers are also known as synchro resolvers and they produce analog output by utilizing the transformer action. There are two different forms in which resolvers come, so let us discuss both of them. The first form is known as varying amplitude rotor voltage. By the name, we can know that the rotor voltage is going to vary as the rotation of the rotor changes. Therefore, the rotating body is attached directly to the rotor, and as the body rotates, the rotor rotates. This schematic over here shows the placement of stator windings and rotor windings. These things are somewhere in between a transformer and a motor. As the rotor is going to rotate, slip rings or brushes are used with the rotor windings to maintain the electrical connection just like a DC motor. However, resolvers also come in brushless form where the rotor winding is in fact a winding of a rotary transformer. The inclusion of rotary transformer eliminates the need and issues of using slip rings altogether. The stator windings on the other hand are placed at 90 degrees apart. Therefore, one is called cosine stator winding, whereas the other one is called sine stator winding. Now the rotor is energized through a rotary transformer. And if the rotor winding is facing the sine stator winding, Maximum voltage will be induced in the sine stator winding, whereas minimum in cosine stator winding. Now, as the rotor rotates through 90 degrees, maximum voltage will be induced in the cosine stator winding and minimum in sine stator winding. Therefore, the amplitude of the AC voltage induced in the stator windings will vary sinusoidally, and if compared with each other, they will be differing by a phase of 90 degrees. In the varying phase rotor voltage form, instead of the rotor, the stator windings are energized, but with a different phase AC signals. Now, if the rotor is facing the sine stator winding, sine voltage will be induced in the rotor, whereas if it is facing the cosine stator winding, cosine voltage will be induced in the rotor. Now, the phase of the induced voltage will depend on the angular position of the rotor. Devices similar to resolvers but incorporating three stator windings are called synchros. They have similar working principle but provide better resolution because of three stator windings. Apart from the discussed rotational displacement sensors, I'll discuss encoders as well but in a separate video because encoders require special attention. 
Moreover, another very important and widely used rotational displacement sensor is called gyroscope, which will be discussed in some later lecture. So you might have to wait for it a bit. This was everything for this video. Don't forget to watch the next video on encoders as these are the most widely and easy to use rotational displacement sensors in the world. Thank you and take care.